Hey everyone, welcome back for more information about mast cell tumors in dogs. So in the last video, we talked about which dogs get mast cell tumors, what they look like, how important it is to aspirate them and find out what they are. We're gonna focus on treatment, but I wanted to also talk about what test your dog may need before they get treated. Definitely they're gonna get that aspirate because we don't wanna just lop that mass off and not know what it is, because if not, your dog is likely gonna need two surgeries, which is bad. One surgery, you want the first surgery to be curative, meaning they don't need to go back. So aspirates are so important. Resist the temptation to think that your dog has a bad cancer and cut it off. Do those aspirates, because if it's benign, it doesn't need to be as big a surgery as we're gonna talk about. So you're gonna do the aspirate of the skin mass before. Most likely your dog's going to have some blood work because it's going to need anesthesia. Most of these dogs are middle-aged and older dogs, so we're going to want full blood work and a urinalysis. So what about checking for spread? And so the potential places this cancer can spread is the draining lymph node. So your veterinarian may aspirate the draining lymph node. We may do an abdominal ultrasound. Um, in general, mast cell tumors spread to lymph nodes, liver and spleen, and bone marrow. So we're gonna do that ultrasound to look at the liver and spleen and maybe some internal lymph nodes. I personally, this is Dr. Sue, this is what I do, reserve bone marrow for some of my higher grade, more aggressive cases. I don't bone marrow most of my mast cell tumor cases on a routine basis. Um, what about chest x-rays? Because most of the time when we think about dogs with cancer that are getting staging tests to see if the cancer has spread, we think about chest x-rays. In general, this is not a cancer that spreads to the lungs. So if we're working on a budget, that might be the test that I hold off on. Because this cancer tends to happen in middle aged and older dogs, I think it's really reasonable to do chest x-rays for general health screening because so many other cancers spread there. So especially some of these other high risk cancer breeds, in the first video, I told you that we tend to see this in like Goldens and Labradors, which are very high risk cancer breeds. So I think it's really reasonable to do chest x-rays. So if you have pet insurance, which is fabulous, or if you have some money, I think it's good, good money to spend to do those chest x-rays. But if I have to pick chest x-rays or abdominal ultrasound for a dog with mast cell tumor, I'm gonna pick ultrasound because again, liver and spleen is a more common spread place than lungs. Okay, so how do we treat mast cell tumors? First and foremost, after we've done an aspirate to determine that it's mast cell tumor, so we know it's not something benign, we know that it needs a big surgery, we are going to do surgery. And why did I stress in the other video finding these lumps and bumps small? The reason I did that, guys, is because let's go back to our one centimeter mass. So this is our one centimeter mass. In general, we need two to three centimeter margins um, around the tumor and a tissue plane underneath deep. So I'm gonna go with a two centimeter tumor because that's sort of what we're finding them at, more common, okay? And so three centimeters on each side, that's another six centimeters. So your dog's gonna come home with an eight centimeter incision. That's really big, okay? So we're just putting that on my arm. That is quite big. And so the reason I stress that is if you can imagine, you know, I see it's not uncommon for me to see dogs that have tumors that are six centimeters and eight centimeters. And so you can imagine if they're down over the, the wrist of a dog or even on the side of a dog, like a small dog, you know, maybe that Schnauzer or Boston Terrier, how challenging it's going to be to get those, that large t amount of tissue. Why do we need these tissues or these cancers really infiltrate the tissues and study have shown about two to three centimeter margins around the, the tumor and a tissue plane deep are really important for preventing that cancer from regrowing. So preventing recurrence. So we don't want the tumor to grow back. So if you just did a little surgery because you didn't know what it was and then you find out it's a mast cell tumor, guess what? We need to go back and do another surgery. Studies show that the first surgery is the best chance for cure because the tissue planes are nice and untouched. So again, do the aspirate. I know it sounds like you're spending more money, but you're going to save money in the long run because you're not doing two surgeries and you're not putting your dog through two anesthesias. You're going to do surgery, 
Hopefully you're going to get that biopsy report back. And a veterinarian like myself, the oncologist, is going to look at the quantity of margins. And hopefully they're going to be wide enough that we're not going to have to recommend any additional surgery. So maybe it was on the arm and that we have nice, clean, and wide margins. I'm going to read that biopsy report. So again, in the last video, we talked about the two-tiered and the three-tiered system. So low, high, and one, two, three. I'm going to look at the mitotic index. I'm going to look at the margins. And then I might be recommending that add-on mass cell tumor prognostic panel. That's going to help me decide about chemotherapy. When would I use radiation? Radiation has been shown to be really helpful if you had a mast cell tumor that was too big because it was found too late on the leg, especially in these little dogs like a chihuahua or a smaller dog where there's just not a lot of skin. The further down, go look at your dog, like there's not a lot of skin. The further you down, you get closer to their paws. Um, and so maybe the surgeon did the best surgery they could, but there was just no more tissue to remove and the margins are dirty. What does dirty margins mean? It means when they looked at the cut edge of the tumor that they removed, there was cancer cells right there. You know what that means? There's cancer cells right there and the tumor's likely to regrow. So radiation has been shown to be very successful after surgery, before the tumor grows back at preventing regrowth of that mast cell tumor. There are studies that looked at dogs two years out after surgery with radiation, 85 to 90% still had good tumor control for those low and intermediate grade mast cell tumors. So that is fabulous. So what does that mean? If you had a dog that had a mast cell tumor that was incompletely removed or dirty margins, probably going to see an oncologist or a radiation oncologist, and maybe they're going to talk to you about radiation. Maybe you want to, don't want to do radiation. Again, I can't give you specific advice, but I'm trying to give you an overview so you can think about some of the things you may need to think about. That was a lot of thinking. Okay. So in general surgery, you know, and for a lot of these low grade mast cell tumors, low and intermediate grade mast cell tumors, based on some of the other things that we determine, a lot of these dogs don't need anything else. They're just going to need periodic monitoring. Um, they may need radiation if the margins were incomplete. If your dog has a non-resectable mast cell tumor, what do I mean by that? It, maybe it was in a part of the leg that was too big. Um, sometimes we will just do radiation um, palliative radiation, and sometimes that can actually shrink the tumor. Uh, sometimes we'll combine that with some steroids and sometimes combine that with chemotherapy as well. So again, there that's why it's so important that you see some specialists for these, some of these big tumors or complicated cases, because sometimes we can think of things or come up with plans that are going to work for your pet. So that's really the advantage of getting some specialist involved. Okay, what is chemotherapy? What is the role of that? So the role of chemotherapy in general for mast cell tumors is for the dogs with the more aggressive ones. So the high grade mast cell tumors or the grade three mast cell tumors or a high mitotic index or some of the things on that mast cell tumor prognostic panel come back in the elevated category, like a CKIT mutation positive or we found metastasis or spread maybe to the lymph node or internally to the liver or spleen. It's those things that are gonna have me recommend chemotherapy. And I have lots of other videos that talk about how well tolerated chemotherapy is and definitely check out the myths and misconceptions video that I have. But again, I want you to know that there is a role for chemotherapy, but that role is in general not in place of surgery. So in general, you say, oh, I don't wanna do surgery, I'd just like to do chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is not very effective. Chemotherapy tends to be most effective after you removed the primary mast cell tumor and you have one of those high risk indications that I talked about. Some of the drugs that you may hear recommended are vinblastine, lomustine, and palladia. There's a couple of different other drugs as well, hydroxyurea, um, cyclophosphamide, or some other drugs that have been used as well. But the three that I mentioned, vinblastine, lomustine, and palladia, it's sort of the main ones and often with steroids as well. So talk to your cancer specialist, talk to your veterinarian about a possible protocol. And again, we always have to see what else is going on with a pet that may make that you know protocol uh, better for them. Do they have the mutation? Do they have liver issues? What's going to be the safest drug for them? But just remember, chemotherapy is super well tolerated. 80% of dogs have no side effects. So guys, that is really it. I think we've covered highlights for dogs with mast cell tumors. So I hope you found this segment on treatment of mast cell tumors helpful. How do I know you found it helpful? Please leave me comments. If you have questions, leave them here as well. 
And again, my mission is to give good information to pet owners because I know how scary it is to find out that your pet has cancer and to find that lumper bump happened to us last year it turned out to be uh, we thought a soft tissue sarcoma and then something benign. But guys, I've been there. I've treated my own cat for lymphoma. I know how hard this is. But again, I'm trying to give good information. So how can I help you and other pet owners with cancer? Please comment, please subscribe and share the video. I appreciate you joining me. Let's kick cancer's butt. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you at the next video.